Does it annoy you or amuse you that you have become widely accepted as the guru of gore? Well, I prefer that to Salt in the Slash. <laughs> <laughs> and my films really aren't about gore. They're about uh, the terrors that people have inside of them and uh, ways of dealing with them. What personally scares you? Well, I, I think what really frightens me is um, the tendency of people to avoid the truth. Uh, in most of my films, oddly enough, the, the, the central machinations of the plot have to do with people not telling each other what's really going on. For instance, in Nightmare on Elm Street, the parents would never admit to their children that they, as parents, had done something really terrible. And the result of that was that the children had to deal with the results of that uh, in their own lives in a very, very deadly way. And as soon as the truth was known, the heroine, Nancy, in Nightmare on Elm Street, was able to begin dealing with it and figuring out who the villain was and how he could be confronted and, and dealt with. So um, I'm, I'm always afraid of, of the truth being hidden. And I think in quite m most cases, horror films have to do with bringing out a truth that's been hidden in our culture. That is, there's a very violent side to us as well as a, a side that's uh, very civilized. Right, so does, does that general analysis explain the more specific appeal of Freddy? I think the, the intriguing thing about Freddy was, there's several things that I think of. First of all, he was designed uh, with a weapon that I thought was the most primal weapon I could imagine. In other words, I thought, well, okay, I'm a caveman, uh, you know, five, 500,000 years ago, um, what am I afraid of? Well, I'm probably going to be afraid of some gigantic cat coming to my cave and reaching in with a claw and hooking me and dragging me back out. And I also made him a paternal figure, the hat, the, uh, you know, the, the old sort of wizened face, because I, I think that one of the deepest fears of a child is the, the, uh, the deadly, dangerous father. What's your favorite scene from Nightmare? I have several. Uh, it's uh, usually the, the very simple things. The, uh, the tongue out of the telephone cost about $5 to do and had an incredible effect on audiences. I mean, I just saw people jump out of their seats with that. In your films, the primary impulse to repulse or thrill or both? No, uh, it's neither. The primary impulse is to uh, awaken. Um, I, I have this sort of notion that most of us go through life more or less asleep, and that uh, sometimes you have to awaken peco people by shock, sometimes you have to show them something that has never been presented to them before. It's, uh, it's unfair to pick on an instance, but uh, w when I saw Shocker, there was a scene where uh, a man was giving another man mouth-to-mouth resuscitation and uh, he bit his lip and ripped it off. Now, what would that awake in me other, other than a, a moment of kind of stomach churning what, repulsion? What I wanted to show in that instance as concisely as I could without a tremendous like a disemboweling or a head chopping off or something, I wanted to show that this man, Horace Pinker, was uh, extremely violent and uh, almost feral, you know, and that uh, the simplest way I could show that was to have him literally bite into something that all of us would identify as a very tender part of your, of your body without being terribly, terribly gross, without being, uh, you know, buckets of blood or anything else like that. Finger looking good. <laughs> so it was that one point in the movie where you have to establish how ferocious this person is in order for people to be afraid of him and take him seriously. And that's the moment in Shocker. Well, it certainly did, did yeah, the it worked, trick. Right? It yeah. did the trick. It really did. Yeah. How, how is Shocker different from um, Nightmare? Well, Shocker is different in that it, it, it starts in dreams, but it goes off into a second uh, sort of gallery of, of dreamland, and that is television. And uh, it takes a, a villain that starts as a real-life, you know, reality type of villain. He's then executed, but that doesn't kill him. It simply makes him able to uh, go on into people's bodies one after another, so you, you don't know who he's in at any given time. And after he, he is chased out of people's bodies, he enters into the wall circuitry of, a, of the hero's house and then makes his way into television itself. The horror films are reflecting the culture at large, an element of it that is not normally dealt with by adults. We, we simply do not talk very much in our culture about uh, the disposition towards violence as a solution. And horror films do talk about that. I've heard of audience participation shows, but this is ridiculous. So how, how would you respond to people who would say that that is a professorish intellectualization of what is in fact just a slash movie. 
It really is my heartfelt belief that uh, horror films do not evoke violence so much as deal with violence that's already there. Um, I think one would be hard put to find a, a, a horror film that's ever harmed somebody, whereas you can take uh, a multitude of things out in the real world uh, done by very civilized institutions and people that have harmed people immensely. Right. I suppose there's an argument that um, that you're having it both ways in the way the camera lingers almost thirstily over, over the gore it allegedly condemns. Well, I don't know. I, I covered it. I tried to cover it just as a documentary would. In fact, uh, the people that had trained me in filmmaking weren't feature filmmakers. I, I'd come out of a building in New York City that was full of documentary filmmakers, and their basic attitude was don't look away. You know, whatever is happening, record it. Don't look away. Don't interfere. So I simply uh, uh, applied that to the making of the film. I think I have as much violence in me as, as anybody else. Uh, I I think I have enough control of my emotions that I don't express that. But it's my belief that all of us uh, have the capacity for great violence.